Good Wednesday morning. Top of the morning to you. So good to see you this morning. Today is Wednesday and I have on yet another beautiful hat. Listen, I got a, a very uh, good explanation from where these hats came from. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that they were given by someone whose sister maybe had gone into assisted living completely not right. That was another situation in another family. This situation where these beautiful hats came from, a woman in our church, her mother uh, had all of these beautiful hats. And when she passed, the sister said, what shall we do with these hats? And my friend said, the Lord showed me your face and I knew you would know just exactly what to do. So today, I have on this beautiful hat. It is, a look. I, th I think it might be my favorite. And tomorrow, I'm going to be traveling at 10 o'clock. So tomorrow morning, we will not have Bible study together. And uh, so I wanted you to see this beautiful hat. But because I'll be traveling tomorrow, and I won't be able to show you tomorrow's hat, I wanted to show that to you today. And this is not going to look super cute on me because I kind of have a little head. But it is a gorgeous, gorgeous hat. I mean, does that not look like royalty? I love that one. And so, uh, here we go. So, here's this one. And so, again, this is called Hats for the Home. If you would like to purchase one of these hats uh, and have it for your very own, they're beautiful. And listen, they're like new. They are like new. I can't believe they've ever been worn. And uh, so this one came from Woodward and Lothrop, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Like I say, it's a little big on my head, but beautiful, beautiful. And so if you would like to have one of these hats, you can just contact me and let me know which one you would like to have. I've still got maybe two dozen more, maybe more than that to uh, show you, but um, these two, uh, the one that I had on just before I had on this one, I think this one, uh, I'm, I'm loving this one. I am loving this one. Uh, Amy thought the bow went in the front, but it goes in the back and it's gorgeous. I love it. So if you would like to purchase one of those, they are at least $25 a piece. I'm not going to sell them for less than that because it's for a donation to the home. And uh, <clears throat> um, and they're worth so much more than that. But uh, send your donation to our church through Givelify or send a check. Or um, you can cash app at dollar sign, capital J, Jack's Girl, J-A-C-K-S Girl, one. Because I was his favorite daughter. And so... I'm number one. I'm number one. I was also his oldest daughter, which is really why it's number one. So, this morning, we're going to look at Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. So, turn there in your Bible to Proverbs 17, and we're going to just keep going. It is a glorious day here. I'm in Tennessee. It's a glorious day. Tomorrow, I'll be back home. And yes, I know I have to quarantine for, um, what? 10 days. And so, um, I'm, I'm prepared for that. I'm good with that. And so, today we're going to look at Proverbs. We're going to continue looking at Proverbs 17. Yesterday was so good. We heard so many wonderful things. But today, maybe even better. Uh, start with uh, Proverbs 17, 4. We didn't get very far yesterday, did we? So, Proverbs, when I say we, I mean me. Proverbs 17 and 4. It says, a wicked man listens to evil lips. A liar pays attention to a malicious tongue. Now, I looked up the word malicious. Of course, I'm, you know, I know how to use it in a sentence. But when you look up the word malicious, it says uh, something that intends or intending to do harm. Malicious, the intent of mal being malicious is to do harm. I and mean, there's just no way around it. If you are being malicious, well, you meant to. 
You're, you set out, you are, you are intentionally doing harm to someone, so it's malicious. And it says, a liar pays attention to a malicious tongue. Doesn't it sound like a liar and a gossip? Doesn't it sound like someone who is wicked, someone who is evil? So there's somebody, and they're giving off all of this malicious mouth, and who, whose attention do they have? Well, they have the evil, they have the wicked, and they have the liar. Because that's what they're wanting to hear. They're just lapping that up. Have you ever been listening to uh, maybe the radio or a television program or something, and it's just like, oh my gosh, that's just obviously a lie that's obviously meant for evil. Obviously so. During the, during the campaigns in 2020, <clears throat> some of the stuff that was reported on the news, and I'm not a particularly political person, but even somebody like myself, who's not really caught up in a lot of stuff, honestly, it was like, nobody's going to believe that. That is just being said to tear somebody's reputation up. That's just being said to cause harm to somebody. That's just being said to make somebody look foolish. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, they're going to correct that because it's not the truth. Obviously, not the truth. And then you hear others repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. That's how it happens with the gossip. That's how it happens with liars and wicked people. They hear a little nugget of something. It does, even, it does not, listen, this whole thing with, it must have a grain of truth in it. No, it doesn't have to have a grain of truth in it. It doesn't. For somebody to snatch that thing up and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and they get the attention of somebody else who loves that kind of thing, who kind of, you know, lets that kind of thing kind of grow in their mind. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That, well, it must have a little bit of truth in it because so-and-so said it. And then I heard so-and-so say it. And then I saw it on Facebook. You can't put things on Facebook that aren't the truth. How funny is that? That's the funniest statement I've ever made in my life. It says a wicked man, he listens to evil lips. He wants to hear it. The worse it is, the better for him. Oh, that's really nasty. Yeah, let me, let me just settle in on that. So, we who are the children of God... The opposite of that would be a righteous man turns away from evil lips. Or a righteous man puts a stop to evil lips. A righteous man says, I'm going to let that malicious rumor, I'm going to let that malicious gossip in right here. I'm going to correct you on it and I'm going to end it right here. When my father-in-law passed at the funeral, there was a minister there who was praying, and he began to pray for some other people. And immediately, some guy, some just random guy, started posting stuff about, about what that was really about and who that really was and all of this stuff. And... I got set, oh, I got in such a tither. I mean, I was just like, oh, my gosh. So I was, you know, saying to Steve, I'm going to reach out to him. You know, I, I think we need to do this. And Steve said, no, no. I'm not going to give any place in my life or the life of my father to that liar. He said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to block him. We're going to block him. He's a liar. People who know us, people who love us, they know what's going on. I'm going to block him. And that's what we did. I can't think of his name now because I've blocked him. That's what you have to do to malicious people, to liars. 
blocker. Turn them off. Turn away. Don't give any attention. Don't throw any more fuel on that fire. All right. He who mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster of others will not go unpunished. We've all seen these people and Max, come here, come here, Hans. And catastrophe happens and they are like, oh, got to see that. Oh, you know what? They were, they were, uh, they were running for some office or they were trying to start up a business or they were trying to get in there and do something. And when that thing went down, major fail for them and I could not be happier. We've all heard that. Maybe we've said it. I could not be happy. I could not be happier than to know that their plan has failed. Now, I'm not talking about an evil plan. I'm talking about a plan where somebody's trying to get ahead. Turn with me in your Bible to Matthew 5.12. Turn with me in your Bible to Matthew 5.12. By the way, I called Stephanie yesterday. She forgave me for running away from home and not telling her where I was. All right, so Matthew 5, 12. No, that's not right. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 3. Matthew 5, 3. 12 is where I quit reading. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, you can be poor in a lot of different ways. You can be poor in spirit. I mean, we've all been in that place. Let's just say things are happening in our life that just cause us to have such brokenness. Poor in spirit. But God says, you know what? They're blessed. They're going to be happy. Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We all have said in our life, I'm so hungry. Um, uh, uh, not before last, Jack, uh, was like, I'm starved. I'm starving. Or, it's been a week ago now. I'm starving. No, none of us, unless you are an exception, we really know what, don't know what it is like to be starving. But it's, he said, you know, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Feed me. And God says to us, look after those who are poor in spirit. Don't mock them. Don't mock those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Don't, don't mock those who have less than we do in any way. Then I'm in Proverbs 17 today. Proverbs 17, um, 6. And I just cannot wait to get to this one. Proverbs 17 and 6. Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. Now, this is talking about a generational. This is a generational blessing. This is a general, this is looking at generations uh, on generations. So not just not just on you, but on your children, on your grandchildren, and it just keeps going on. And it says, I love that it uses that example, that it's a crown, because this is talking about as though the imagery is as though uh, he's talking about, imagine uh, a grandparent sitting down and he's just surrounded, or she's just surrounded by beautiful grandchildren. It's a wonderful thing to have grandchildren. I, I know, I know a lot of people think I'm, I don't know, crazier about my grandchildren than I was my children, which is not the truth, not the truth. I adore my children. 
I adore my children. There's something about those grandchildren. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I don't have to take them home. It's a blessing to have these grandchildren. And this is talking about it's like wearing a crown. And every part of that crown. You know, when you're getting a blessing in the Bible, it talks about receiving a crown. To, to just have a crown on your head. Look at this. To just have, now this one is not for sale. This hat is not for sale. Just wearing a crown on your head. People look at you and they know you're blessed. They know you're respected. They know you're honored. They know God has given good things into your life. You've got all of these grandchildren. Your children's children. Your children. Generations that come after. It's like having... Oops, can you see the top of this beautiful crown? This was here in this house. A beautiful crown. And to wear that beautiful crown, it's like, or it's like uh, an older word is a diadem, which is also a crown. It's just a crown. Having grandchildren, having children in your life, having these younger people in your life that bless you and love on you and respect you, and they circle you and they're listening to you, it's like children's children, it's a crown. There's not a lot of wonderful things about getting older. I'm just going to testify to that. I mean, yeah, you're getting older and you're supposedly getting wiser, but not necessarily. But one thing that comes is those children and those grandchildren who love you. And it's a blessing to you. It's a gift to you. I saw um, my sister Sherry talking to her granddaughter, um, Collins. They call her Coco. And it was on FaceTime. And Coco looks just like Sherry. In, in my opinion, maybe others think she looks more like her daddy than her mother or her grandmother, but she just looks like Sherry. And Sherry would say to that little girl, she's just a year old, uh, no, yeah, 15 months. And she would say, hey, girl. And Coco would say, hey, girl. Just the cutest thing. What a blessing. I cannot de describe to you how Sherry's face lit up when she knew it was Sarah calling and that she had the grandkids. It's a blessing. And it's from God. It's from God. All right, Proverbs 17, 7. Arrogant lips or proud lips are unsuited to a fool. How much worse lying lips to a ruler? Arrogant lips are just, if you're a fool, and remember, whenever the Bible talks about being a fool, it's talking about spiritually. Spiritually, you're a fool. You don't believe in God. You don't trust God. You don't read his word. You don't even desire to know anything about him. But this is saying how ridiculous it is when they're trying to use big words and speak eloquently and proudly. How much worse lying lips to a ruler how much worse lying lips to a ruler? So if this is saying people who are fools, they don't have any business using big eloquent words, but a ruler, someone in leadership who's a liar. God's word, Proverbs 17, 7. Proverbs 17, 7. We should all circle that one. Lying lips to a ruler. Lying lips to a ruler. 
I'm not even going to discuss that one. I don't have to. It's like when the Bible talks about a ring in a pig's snout. A ring in a pig's snout. A, a pig doesn't need jewelry. It's not going to make it look any better. How much worse? Lying. From a Lulu. Remember, these proverbs were written by Solomon. They are words of wisdom. They are words of learning. They are words that apply to our lives. How much worse? Lying lips to a ruler. Number eight. Seventeen eight. Why do my phone? Which is tell me the time. Oh, there it is. Oh, we're good. All right. A bribe or a present is a charm to the one who gives it. Whoever, wherever he turns, he succeeds. So we need to get our foot in the door. And we use a present. We call ahead and we bring a present. God's word does not tell us to not gift one another. To not help one another. It also does not tell us that when somebody brings us a gift that we are to be absolutely suspicious and absolutely, oh, what are the, what is she trying to get out of me? What do they think I'm going to do for them? This just says, but wherever he turns, he's going to succeed. I like to bring something when I go to somebody's house. Now, right now, Sally is laughing her head off because yesterday she said we could do some baked potatoes. And she said, if you'll go get the potatoes and then I'll bake them. And I said, well, okay, how many? How many? She said, well, I have four. And I said, well, there's just, you know, four of my crowd, so I don't need to bring anything. It was a joke. It was a joke, but I didn't bring anything. It was a joke, but I didn't bring anything. How much better it is to bring a gift and present it and then have that success. Get our foot in the door. Bring the gift. He who covers over an offense promotes love. He who covers over an offense promotes love. Has somebody ever offended you and you just let it go? You just said, you know what? I'm just going to I'm going to let that go. I'm going to cover that over. I'm, I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. That's love. That's love. We all do things that offend other people. So the thing to do is to go back to them and to apologize. To go back to them and apologize. But then if they said, you know what? I just, that doesn't matter. To cover over an offense, that's love. To know that somebody has hurt your feelings, but then you look at it through the eyes of love and maybe you think, well, they didn't mean that. They weren't being malicious. That was just spoken. Or just, maybe they were having a bad day or maybe they didn't feel well when, uh, when Amy was a baby. And if she ever was fussy or bad, ever, um, her grandmother, Lowry, who uh, loved her, would say, oh, Oh, I think I think she's maybe she has maybe she has diaper rash, Jan, diaper rash, Janice. So she just she just have diaper rash. She's just being fussy. No, no, let's no. You see, she wanted to come cover over that offense. 
on that same note, we were here one time in Cleveland. Oh, it's when we lived here, I guess. And we were out at a restaurant, and we were getting ready to get in the car and go somewhere, and we'd finished our food, and Amy was just sitting there being good next to her grandmother, and I said, Amy, come on, let's go to the bathroom, because <laughs> I just wanted her to go to the bathroom before we got back in the car. But when I said, Amy, come on, let's go to the bathroom, I guess Mildred thought I was gonna take her in there, you know, maybe just spank her, and she said, no, why would you take her to the bathroom? She's been so good. No, don't take her to the bathroom. She's been so good. And I said, I'm going to take her to the bathroom so she can use the bathroom. Oh, oh, okay, she says. Okay, Amy, you go with it, Mommy. When you look at something through the eyes of love, and when you look at something and you're not immediately offended, and honestly, we could, we could go six months on please stop being offended at everything. But when you look at things through the eyes of love, and when you give somebody else, maybe the maybe give them a pass today, it says to do that. It promotes love. It encourages love. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. So let's say, let's say Sally and I, we have some kind of a, deal and she forgives me she just overlooks me but then she goes to sherry that's the baby sister she says you will not believe what janice did you will not believe what janice did well then she's repeated it and it's beginning to put a wedge not between her and sherry because now they're confidence but between me and sherry and sherry might not even know me but she has this, this thought in her mind of, she has this thought in her mind of, well, I know she did that to Sally. How do I know she won't do that to me? And maybe she tells somebody else. Now, everybody in town knows Janice did that to Sally. Sally, out of the goodness of her heart, forgave Janice. But listen to what else was done. You see, you don't want to, you don't want to keep repeating that. If you forgive somebody, let it go. Because Jesus Christ forgave you of much worse than anything we can do for each other. Anything. Jesus Christ forgave us of a mountain of sin, and then He allowed us to be with Him eternally, and He did not. He constantly intercedes for us. That means instead of going up to God the Father and sitting there and saying, you will not believe what she got into today. I had to forgive her again. I, you know, I forgave her. I went to the cross for her, and, and she's doing some stuff, but she asked for my forgiveness. But I'm just going to tell you, and I know you won't tell anybody else, you won't believe what's happening. No. When we say to our Father, Jesus Christ, forgive me of that sin. It says that I'm now covered in his blood so that he no longer even sees that sinful person. He no, he no longer sees that malicious person. That it is carried so far away, it's farther away than the east is from the west. There's no end to that. Be a forgiving person. Be a forgiving person and then keep your mouth shut about it. Keep your mouth shut about it. A rebuke impresses a man of discernment. A rebuke impresses a man of discernment. How many of you like to get a rebuke? Nobody's got their hand up. Nobody's got their hand up. If you do... I'm going to rebuke you over that. A rebuke is when somebody comes to us and they say, hey, you're doing, you're doing this wrong or you're doing the wrong thing or you shouldn't be doing that or uh, let me talk to you about doing something. And it says uh, that kind of person, that kind of person, they have no discernment. 
You know, if you if you look at them and you say, I'm not going to, no, don't tell me that. Instead of saying, let me think about that, okay? Let me think about that, okay? I got a phone call yesterday about somebody who was doing something that they should not be doing. And I called them on it. I said, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not. I want, you, I want you to stop, and I want you to walk away from that situation. And then once you're away from it, I want you to call me and tell me I'm safely away from that safe situation. And they kind of flared up with me. Not, not bad, but a little bit. You could tell in their voice that they were thinking, you don't have any business telling me that. But they did not say that. But I got a call an hour later, and they said, you are absolutely right. And thank you for that. It takes a big man. It takes a big woman. It takes a discerning person to receive a rebuke and process it. And then say, it's right. Even if you never, even if you never go back to the person who rebuked you and say, you were right. Because sometimes, sometimes that's really not even necessary. It felt good to, to hear that rebuke. I mean, I mean, to hear that thank you, I'll just tell you that. But as we come in together and as we gather together, and we know that there are things in our lives we need to take care of, that we need to clean up, that we need to remove from our lives. And if we have discernment, we hear that. Then it says, I'm in Proverbs 17, 10, that that impresses a man more than a hundred lashes does a fool. A fool, you can just beat them all day with the truth and they never accept it. They never uh, believe it. They never trust it. But a person with wisdom, a person with discernment, they're going to accept that rebuke. They're going to process that rebuke and they're going to think about it. So we're out of time for today. Oh, a little bit over. But I want us to think about that. I want us to think about these things, about how God gives us wisdom if we'll use it. I mean, listen, you could look at the scripture and say, that's a rebuke. That's coming against me, and I don't appreciate that. Or you could say, I'm reading God's word. I'm finding all kinds of things I need to change. I need to make things right in my life. Father, today, we put our lives in your hands. We put our faith in your hands. We put our strength in you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for giving us discernment and wisdom and a boldness and an authority that we've never known before. And Lord, today, as we continue about our day, I pray that you would continue to pour into us that we would pour into others. In Christ's name, amen, amen. God bless you. There is no Bible study tomorrow morning because I'll be traveling. And so that's why I put on the two hats today. And again, if you would like to purchase one of these hats, just let me know uh, either on Facebook or if you have my cell phone number or you can call the church and they can tell you how to take care of things. And so just know that I love you so much. Ricky Dawson, I see that your name is on there. Uh, listen, Ricky, that letter that you sent me that's in my Bible, it makes me smile every time I look at it, and I look at it all the time. God bless you guys. I will not see you tomorrow. I will see you Friday morning. Bye-bye.